in the two Chechen wars that began in 1994, and they were very familiar with the ISIS leadership, while the U.S. had been training foreign fighters for years. This experience and a long-standing tradition applying target information with massive sums of money would prove to be devastating to ISIS's leadership. And as the coalition quietly made progress, it became abundantly clear that the so-called Syrian moderate rebels Obama kept referring to were more of a fantasy than a reality. To this day, retired General Dempsey is perplexed by Obama's bold-faced lie that Turkey's Erdogan is a staunch ally with the United States in the fight against the Islamic State. Cy Hirsch writes, Dempsey and his associates remained mystified by Obama's continued public defense of Erdogan, given the American intelligence community's strong case against him and the evidence that Obama in private accepts that case. Hirsch wrote last spring, Obama said to Turkey's intelligence chief, we know what you're doing with the radicals in Syria. After Dempsey retired in September, General Dunford and an entirely new and obedient staff was installed to back up all of Obama's lies, as is evident by their communal hatred of Donald Trump. Cy Hirsch has presented nothing less than another testament to Obama's pitiful leadership of the U.S. military, built upon a pile of half-baked falsehoods, now proven without a shadow of a doubt to be treasonous support for the Islamic State. John Bound, for Infowars.com. All right, we're going to cut this segment short because I understand we have an urgent phone call right now from Admiral Akbar of the Rebel Alliance. Admiral, thanks for joining us. You know, we were just talking about the internet kill switch and Barack Obama, you know, he just said that he thinks we should hand power of the internet over to the federal government I think that sounds like a scary thought. And Obama says it will be used fairly and distributed equally. What do you say to that? It's a trap. What happened? Do we just, do we lose them? So good. There's been a lot of trials and tribulations, but all of it's made me stronger. And I just want to experience this journey with you. I want our children to grow up together and their children and their children to have a future that goes to the stars and beyond. And we can do this. I just want to win. I want humanity to succeed. And I'm so sick of people that don't like humanity. humanity. So I get wound up because I, it's fight and flight, and there's nowhere to run. So I'm like a raccoon in the garage that somebody's about to kill, man. I don't have a choice. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a, a workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to get my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all in InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which what I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity, 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes. And now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things. And if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, Infowars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena, and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle. And Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. He joins us now. Mr. Hirsch, thank you for coming on. The big issue is the question, one of the big questions is, uh, we've demonized Bashar Assad. He's, he's a dictator, no question. Uh, you cross him, he'll cross you. He's a lot better than his father, the old man Assad, you know, uh, uh, Hafez Assad. He, he was uh, trained to be, he was the second or third son, never thought he'd be president because the older boys had the past. Uh, went to medical school, was an ophthalmologist, married a, a very second generation uh, Iraqi woman who worked for uh, one of the national, you know, investment houses, uh, American investment houses in London. And so he was, not, all of a sudden, there he's called upon. His older brother dies, and his father says, you, you better get a couple years of Army training and get ready. So he's, he's, he's he, look, he's hated in America. I don't think you can get five votes for him in Congress. He's demonized, he's, he's killed, there's about 250,000 deaths. But he's, he's a lot better than Al-Qaeda. Well, you know something, and ISIS, and also, things have, I, I watched him for six, eight, ten years. I went back and forth there. I've been going there to the Middle East a lot since 9-11. And he's, you know, he got much more open. You could, you, know, you could bank there. You could have the, uh, uh, you can uh, uh, go to an ATM machine. Uh, there were 30 different foreign broadcasts on TV. It was, he was opening. Yes, when you cross him, he's going to fight you to the end. It's a war to the end. He's fighting um, uh, ISIS. He's fighting al-Qaeda. He's fighting al-Nusra. These are people that hang and, and garrot some of the horrible stuff that happened. He's had as many as 200 of his soldiers executed at one sitting by these people. So it's a war in which he's killed a lot and they've killed a lot. And it's a war to the end. Uh, and and he's, uh, the, what I wrote about in part was that the, our Joint Chiefs um, decided some years ago on the basis of intelligence reporting that there really wasn't any option, that there really were no moderates. Although we, the, the White House keeps on talking about there are moderate groups in the opposition. There were at one time, but they were quickly taken over and cleaned out by the more radical jihadist you know, people who believe in Sharia law. Uh, some of the groups we advocate uh, as moderate uh, have already made it clear that if they ever took over the government, no Christians or Alawites, that's a, a minority sect, Shia sect that uh, Bashar Assad and about 12 percent of the uh, of the people living in Syria belong to, none of them could be in, could be allowed to live in the country. They were talking about genocide, you know, uh, uh, genocide of cleaning, the cleansing, if you will, of a society. 
that's, those are the moderate groups. So there, there you are. Um, so the option was the Joint Chiefs looking at the intelligence, looking at the fact that we had been supporting for years covertly. Uh, this is through the CIA, David Petraeus. Uh, I would argue that Hillary Clinton surely should have been aware of this. She was Secretary of State. We began, to, after, after uh, Libya fell, we began to funnel stuff that, um, in an earlier article I called the rat line, um, a lot of arms from Libya into Turkey. And from Turkey, uh, the, uh, the gentleman running Turkey, Erdogan, is a, is a total, complete supporter of ISIS. I don't think there's any question of that, even though we deny that. Our intelligence shows it. So I, what I wrote about is the fact that, that two and a half years ago, the Joint Chiefs decided, well, they can't convince the White House uh, and the State Department with intelligence. They're just going to begin to do what they can do to try and modify uh, the American policy or make it less, you know, um, they, nobody wants to talk about directly challenging a president. That's not your job. But I will tell you, at the certain level, at the Joint Chiefs, the level of four-star generals, the oath of office is an oath to the Constitution, not to the president. That's right. And, it, and it's very traditional. Doug, you can go back to Douglas McCarthy. You can go back to World War II fighting. You can go back to terrible fighting in Vietnam. President so Eisenhower, safe. as the president, challenged the military-industrial complex there you as go. a system himself, the ultimate level, still a general saying, I want to challenge the people that want to control our military for their own aims. There you go. There you go. And, and you can even argue that the hatred for McNamara by the time he was ready to get out of there in 67 because he refused to listen to the generals. We've always had generals in opposition. So this isn't new. What they did, though, instead of directly challenging the, the uh, Joint Chiefs, as I wrote about, beginning in the summer of nine, 2013, after a lot of intelligence showed that our path was wrong. We weren't going to win. Uh, if we got rid of Bashar, we were going to have a government a completely full of, of wackos, you know, wing nuts. Uh, a hard line to take off their head people. Clearly worse. Uh, I, I, I mean, a happens, whole new Afghanistan. Well, there you go. Well, look, Afghanistan's still a mess right now. You know, people always talk. I, I'm a big supporter. I, I, uh, I, I was in the Army. Uh, there's nothing better than America. It's the greatest country to be in. But we do have a lot of freedom. And I will tell you that our, our special operation forces, the Delta Force, uh, the, the SEALs, they're terrific. They're very good at what they do. But they're being miscast. This is we're now in 14 and a half years Absolutely. of war against an idea, and the Joint Special Operations Command, for all of their ability to go hit a house at night and kill people and take them out, we're not winning that war. Well, you know it's interesting. What they did was because they didn't want to go directly to Bashar Assad because the president had ruled that you know that's that would have been a direct violation. But we did know that the Germans, in particular, the German intelligence service and the German high command, and get this, the Russians and the Israelis, all three had been in contact with Bashar Assad, because all three, even Israel, which sometimes you know, doesn't always speak what the real policy is, uh, they've got a lot of problem, government problems, leadership problems, but the guys running the military and intelligence system in Israel had the same point of view as our, the guys running, our, at least that, that were running our joint chiefs, because the general at the time was General Dempsey. They're saying. Martin Dempsey, who's now retired, is a, is, is a new chairman. And we, we don't know where he stands on this, because publicly he said little. He's only a couple of months into it. Uh, uh, I understand a very competent Marine named Dumford. I just don't know much about him. I know more about Dempsey. And <laughs> Was Dempsey the big hero in this, going to Obama saying? Well, I, you know, he wouldn't look at it that way. He just did something... It, 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 the issue was we were going the wrong way. The Germans and the Russians and the Israelis were begging for intelligence. One thing America does, and we do it very well, we have terrific intelligence. We have satellites. We have SIGINT intelligence. We do have people on the ground. You Believe me, we can do better, we can do better than, than anybody wants to write about with certain groups. We can penetrate people. We're not, we're not incompetent. But often it's the leadership that gets you in trouble. So they decided that... The Germans in particular were kept on saying, what, what can you do to help us? They, they began in the fall of 9, 2013. We began to shovel stuff that we had about um, al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, ISIS. We began to shovel information not only about where they were, but what they were thinking, as much as we learned. And so we enabled uh, uh, Bashar's army, the Syrian army, which right now has probably emerged and has been fighting a tough war for four years. It's emerged as one of the better armies in that area. Um, uh, a hell of a lot better army, for example, in the Iraqi army or anything we have in Afghanistan. So 
What they did is they did it that way. That way they were sort of, as somebody 